Hi, this is Stephen Rosell, Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and I'm going to review the modeling improvements and new features for Maya 2015. So we'll start with something that's kind of very fundamental to modeling, and that is pre-selection highlighting. Pre-selection highlighting is the ability to preview what you're going to select before you actually select. It's been in Maya for a while, but it's gotten a complete update. And what you'll see is that it actually is much more robust and much more predictable. You no longer have to hover exactly over a vertex or an edge or a face in order to pre-select highlight that. We've also added the ability to preview your soft selection as you're doing your pre-selection highlighting, whether you're in face or edge or component mode. You can now hover over a face and based on the size or rather radius of the soft select as well as the fall off, you can actually preview what that's going to look like before you actually select it and then apply it. Another thing that you can do is a lazy selection based on the profile of an object. So if I were to go into vertex mode and just use my tilde key, now I can actually hover just near my mesh and then I can actually click and begin to change the profile of the mesh at that point without actually having to click directly on the mesh itself. So it's a really nice way of going in and refining a profile. Additionally, we've added the ability to mirror the soft selection as well as the pre-selection highlighting. So if we were to go into my marking menus here and turn on symmetry, what you'll notice is that with or without soft selection, I'm able to basically hover over a face, a vertex, or an edge, and then see the companion on the, on the mirror or the opposite side. This works, as I said, with soft selection. So if I turn on soft selection, I can go in and I can preview the soft selection on both sides as well. Now I could actually go in and I can begin to make changes to the cheek or to something like the, the jawline and have that reflect over to both sides of the character. So something like this may pull the jawline out a little bit over here and you get the basic idea. Now if I were to go in and turn off symmetry and start to make some changes to say areas like here around the lips let's go in and add a little bit of asymmetry this is something that is pretty common when it comes to working with characters in that you start with something symmetrical and then you begin to add asymmetry which is a very human-like trait in order to make your character look more interesting and more, more unique now by doing that of course i've actually broken the the symmetry in terms of the actual location of those vertices. So if I were to go in and turn on symmetry once again, you can see that I've now lost my pre-selection highlighting uh, for one side of my character. Now if I go up and look at the forehead, you can see that the forehead still has the symmetry. So based on the proximity or the location of those components, I can still find my symmetry. But down here where I've broken the symmetry on the nose, it will highlight in a different color to let me know that it cannot find the symmetrical match. I can fix that by simply going in and grabbing an edge at the center of my character and then setting that edge as my topological axis or my topological center so that now it will recognize the topological symmetry point without having to worry about the actual world space uh, position of that component. So now I can go in and for instance grab the, the corner of one uh, lip, one side of the lip and have that mirror over to the other so that I can go in and I can make these kind of changes to an asymmetrical character which is something that was, would have been very difficult to do before. So let's talk a little bit more about symmetry but we'll use a different part of the scene. This time we'll actually use a piece of the backpack or, or part of the, the gear that he's wearing. So I'm going to go back into my symmetry options and we're going to turn off topology and go back into just regular world space symmetry. And what you'll see is I've got two unique shells. These are actually independent shells within the same object that are symmetrically shaped. So this will work across shells. But one thing that's really interesting about this is this actually works not only with things like pre-selection highlighting, but it also works with things like um, modeling edits based on selection. So if I were to go in, let's turn off soft selection, but I'm just gra grabbing an, a face path here, and I'm just going to go in and quickly apply an extrude. Then we'll go in, we'll add a little bit of an offset to that extrude, and then we'll go in and repeat that just by hitting the G key, and we'll add a little bit of thickness to that extrude. And now I've got a really nice kind of beveled uh, extruded effect based on uh, a face path that is symmetrical on both sides. So you can see that as I make changes to one side, that's going to apply to both sides. So not only do we do symmetrical transforms now, but we can do symmetrical edits on the topology as well. So let's do another example here. And actually, just for visual clarity here, I'm going to do an isolate select on this piece of the gear. And we'll focus in on this area here 
uh, where I want to go in and add a little bit of detail. So I could do another extrude, but this time I may actually want to do a bevel. So a couple of things I'm going to do. One is I'm going to use a couple of different selection methods. So I'm actually going to just double click on an edge path. And then I'm going to go in and continue to select by double clicking on another edge path and merge my selections. So the way that you select paths, whether they be face paths or edge paths, is much more predictable and much more robust in Maya 2015. You'll notice that as I selected that, it of course selected onto the other side. So I'll just enable my textures now and we'll go into the modeling mode. And actually I accidentally selected the wrong one. So I can just control double click and I can unselect a path and then I can reselect a path over here. And I'll just go in and add my selections there. So now I've uh, got basically a shell here that I actually want to bevel. So I'm going to go into the bevel tool and the bevel tool has been completely rewritten in Maya 2015. So it's rewritten in a number of ways, but the main thing is that the algorithm that actually creates the bevel is completely different. So as an example, you can go in and you can use the legacy bevel settings. And if I do that and apply the bevel, you'll immediately see the problem of the old bevel. So I get these weird corner areas with the old bevel that would have caused problems, significant problems before, making bevel sometimes unusable. Now if I undo that and I reapply it with the new algorithm, as soon as I apply that, what you'll notice it is, is that it applies this nice even bevel all the way around my object. And it keeps a uniform distance or width of the bevel all the way across. So as part of that, there is a new attribute that's associated with this. So if I go into the channel box and actually take a look at the bevel node, there is a fraction value and that fraction value can be changed either before or after. And this fraction value allows me to actually go in and keep a uniform width for the bevel all the way across. And that includes when I were, if I were to go in and add segments as well. So again, the bevel is much improved. It also preserves UV shells much, much more predictably, and it also preserves per face shader assignments as well. And again, just to reiterate it, the bevel that I applied to the left side gets applied to the right side based on the symmetry setting. So let's turn off the isolate select and we'll focus on a different area here. And we're gonna use the new and improved multi-cut tool to make a few different modifications. Uh, to this object. So we're going to work on the backpack once again, the jetpack, and we'll just isolate this particular area for now. And we'll go into the multi-cut tool. So the multi-cut tool has been relocated now to the left marking menu, which is the primary marking menu, and it is meant to replace the poly split tool, the interactive split tool, as well as the cut polys tool. So it combines the functionality of all these into one, as well as insert edge loop. So for instance, if I were to want, to want to trace out some detail in the mesh based on the texture, you can basically start with a couple of different techniques. If you hold control, then as you hover, it will give you a preview of what an insert edge loop would look like. As soon as I click, it will apply that. So you can see it did an insert edge loop all the way along the texture. And then it stopped here because it didn't know how to proceed based on this insided face. So here I can use the same tool now to basically behave as a split poly or the old legacy split poly. And it also has behaviors of the interactive split in the sense that it gives you a clear indication of where your points are. And it also gives you the ability to go back in and make changes after the fact. So I can begin to go in here and actually make very specific changes to the location of any given point before I actually go in and hit enter to apply the detail. So this tool can also be used as a cutting tool or a knife tool. So we'll use another part of my geometry for this. We're actually going to use this piece of the backpack right here. And once again, we'll do an isolate select and we'll go into view selected. And I'll go to the right point of view here. And what I want to do is, first of all, just um, go into the, the tool itself and the options. And I'm going to begin just by resetting the options. And if I click on the mesh, of course, then I'll basically insert points directly onto the mesh. I don't want to do that. I want to actually click outside of the mesh and click, drag across. And that will work as a knife tool, allowing me to insert the detail in a linear fashion. Now I can also turn on a couple of options using my marking menus or the options on the right. One of which is an extract faces, which will basically allow me to separate these two into separate shells. 
And then in turn, I can set this into a delete faces. And depending on the direction that I drag, as I release, it will delete one side or the other. So now I can begin to carve this up and remove any detail that may be unnecessary based on the fact that it's hidden from the, the other part of the jetpack. So let's go back into my standard perspective view. And now you can see when I bring the rest back, the part that's deleted was unnecessary. So I don't need that anyway. So now let's talk about another improvement and that is to the booleans in Maya, which are long overdue for an update. So we've basically completely rewritten the Boolean tools in Maya, replacing them with what's known as the car Boolean library. So the underlying algorithms are different. So what we're gonna do is grab this piece of the gear here and I'm going to grab one, two, three of these kind of bolts or rivets that are gonna be used to carve out pieces from this uh, piece of the backpack. So I'm gonna go into my Boolean pull down menu here and we'll bring up the difference options. Difference being basically a subtraction. What you can see is I've got a couple of different options. I've got an edge option and I've got a normal option. If I apply the edge option, then I will get a kind of a traditional Boolean where I'm actually carving out or cutting out a hole with the back faces or with the faces uh, of the Boolean object. Now, if I do this using the normal mode, that will actually work as a cutting mechanism to create a hole in the object. This is something you couldn't really do before in Maya. So now this is actually a hole without actually creating the actual in intersecting piece. So that's just an option that can be applied beforehand or it can be applied after the fact. So I can actually go into the Boolean operation and I can change this back to edge or normal after the fact if I need to. Now another thing that's been improved is the ability to access some of the modeling toolkit features directly from within the marking menus, which is a big improvement in terms of just workflow efficiency. So if I wanted to go in, you can see where I did this Boolean and the vert vertices don't quite line up. I can actually go in and I can hover right over vertice and then bring up the marking menus for vertices and then go in and use something like the target weld tool, which is a tool that was part of the modeling toolkit and that has now been integrated directly into the marking menu. So now I can go in and quickly start to stitch up any of these vertices that may not be aligned correctly based on the original Boolean. You can also work in edge mode. So if I switch over to edge mode, I can just click drag and begin to stitch up these edges based on just a simple uh, proximity. Essentially just click dragging one on top of another. With a few clicks I was able to fix up the problems that were left over from the boolean. Another nice new update is the inclusion of edge flow in a number of the poly modeling tools including the the multi-cut tool which I just previously showed. So let's isolate select this area and what you'll see again is that I've inserted or, or booleaned in this kind of circular area but it's very crude and very kind of rigid with these hard edges. I might want to add some curvature to this after the fact. Would have been very hard to do previously. Now what I can do is I can just use my multi-cut tool and what you'll notice is if I hold control and I apply multi-cut traditionally it will just apply a linear insertion but what I want to actually do is turn on edge flow and that will basically allow me to inherit the, the shape or the curvature of those incoming and outgoing edges. So I can basically go down and as I begin to drop down these points, regardless of whether I'm using the insert edge loop mode or whether I'm just doing something like a linear insertion. Oops, I missed that. Let's go back here one more time. There we go. Hit enter and you'll notice that even with a linear insertion, it picks up the flow of the existing surface and very quickly I can go in and I can get a real nice curvature to that area. So now I'll just quickly go in and add some more points here and then we'll just finish off with a connection here. And now in a few quick steps, I went in and I added what looks to be kind of a spherical indentation. And I can also do it around the perimeter here. If I go back into the multi-cut tool, hold control, I can basically insert an edge loop there. And again, it inherited that flow. So that's something that would have been a lot trickier to do before and is now very easy to do in one single tool. There are a few remaining odds and ends that I'd like to cover that pertain to component selection and transform of components. So let's take a look at this piece of gear again. I'm gonna go back in time here. And I'll talk a little bit about selection. So first of all, we have some nice methods for selection now that are improved from, from previous versions. So let's say that I wanted to select this area around here. So I can do controlled face path selections now. So I can click on a face, double click here, 
double click here and double click there. And then I can continue around and I can redirect my face path selections very easily. That works with edges and verts as well. It's something I couldn't really do before. Another thing that we can do, uh, let's use a different example, is let's go in and select an edge loop here just by double clicking on it. And then I'll just control right click to convert that to faces. When I do that, now I have these interior faces that aren't selected. So I can use a couple of different methods for, for selecting this, but previously I would have had to go in and basically just shift click on these edges and just click for each one. Now I can simply hold the tab key and that you'll notice my cursor changes that puts me into a drag select mode. Now I can just click drag to highlight and select additional components to add or remove those to my selection that used to be hidden in the UI. So another thing that I can point out here is if I have this face uh, area selected here, if I wanted to do something like an extrude, that's fine. But let's say that I actually wanted to bevel around those edges. Well, that would have been a little tricky before in certain cases. So now what I can do is if I control right click, I can go into edges and I can now convert my faces into the perimeter of the selection. So the perimeter will give me the boundary edges for whatever I have selected. And then this would allow me to go in and set something like a bevel that would only apply to the edge itself. So now when I go in, you can see that that bevel is only gonna to apply to that outer edge. I could also do things, if I undo that, I could do things like a detach. And detach would actually allow me to break that shell off into a separate piece. So we've added a lot of kind of kind of hidden underlying functionality that allows you to control the way that you select components much more easily now.